we pray. Father, let the hearers, all the hearers, be doers of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are going to see this, this one. Life is a journey. I am going to Israel, September 8 to 18. You know that God is writing an itinerary? Itinerary. God is writing an itinerary. And the destination is heaven. You know, in our book, we can be climbing mountains, walking with valleys and plains, crossing rivers, meeting all these lions and a bear, and fighting the battles because there are enemies along the way. But our covenant says, you are not going to be alone because God is with you in this journey. So, the journey, you can see, an encounter with God, triangle stands for God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the cross stands for Jesus. Some accepted Jesus when they are younger, and some, they are older. So it doesn't matter when you started your journey, that means when you accepted Jesus, that is the start of your journey. You encounter Jesus, the start of your journey. So we look into the next. Okay. The Maskus encounter means encountering or the day of your salvation. We call it the Maskus encounter. When then uh, Paul was sold, he met the Lord on the way to Damascus, and he was blinded by the bright light, and he fell from the horse. You know, when there is a there is a policeman, and you are caught a uh, crime, and you say surrender. So you are going to raise your hand, and whatever you are holding, you are going to drop. You are going to drop because you are going to surrender. You cannot be surrendering and your hands on your pocket or at the back surrender. This is surrender. Yes. You are not bringing anything, holding anything. So surrender is like dropping something, surrendering what you have, and that's what happened to Paul. <clears throat> so he surrendered the whole person because he, he fell from his horse and became blind. He was blinded. So who was Paul? That was his conversion. That was the beginning of his journey. So he became a believer disciple. And he was called a missionary to the Gentiles. He had a missionary journeys. First journey, pioneering the churches. Second journey, visiting the churches and looking into what is the need of the church or churches, house churches. And he wrote the books of the Old Testament, almost half of them. And he was persecuted. He was imprisoned. And he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians while he was in prison. And he experienced shipwreck and beating and abandoned. And you know, this verse is his valedictory address. Uh, we are going to see this one. Second Timothy 4 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept my faith. So that means you went through, he went through all and finished the race. Because this is a journey of life. You are looking to heaven, to the day of the Lord. Okay, we go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. You know, it is really an honor for me to be standing. It's a humbling experience to be standing here and deliver this word. This burden of God in Malachi. You know the Bible contains the message of love from Genesis to Revelation. All the Bible is about love. One book, one story. And it's that story. is love for us. In Malachi, and we're going to look into Malachi. Okay. Sometimes parents, I will say, 
Hmm? What did you say? And the children said, I didn't see anything. I'm here, I'm here. What did you say? <laughs> because the, the baby is already hearing this complaint. And then already very, very uh, attentive to the, the answer of the children. In return of my sacrifices for you, this is what you are going to return to me. <laughs> this respect, insult, mockery, and that is God. God is saying to us. Because when he was addressing to Malachi or to the Israel, Malachi was addressing to what have we spoken against you? Did we? Because the conversation was not good. Just like the children murmuring before, behind, sometimes, beside, sometimes, in front of the parents. And the choice of words was not, was not uh, good. Speaking proudly, sometimes the children will say to the parents, I know better. Ah, you know. Cell <laughs> phone, you know. <laughs> but that whole of life, cell phone might be. But you, can't, you don't know how to cook, you don't know how to clean. <laughs> you know cell phone, but cell phone will not cook for you. <laughs> so, this is uh, the word here. Your word has been harsh against me. Just like a father, mother, talking to the children. Says the Lord, yet you see, what have we spoken against you? What have we spoken against you? It's just like they were denying that they have said something. They spoke it uh, proudly and made a light matter of it. And he said, what have you spoken at this time? It, you know, it's reverse psychology, just like the children. The parents will think, who's right, me or my child? They were thinking, because we are given the courage to believe that we are wrong. We never know what's wrong. Reverse psychology. What have we spoken against you? So that sometimes the truth will come alive and like truth. Some somewhat say we did not say anything against you. Not owning the bad attitude. That is verse 13. And that's it. You have said it is useless. You know what's useless? Useless. You're going to throw away. Because useless are rubbish. Mm. Throw it to the bin. Because it's useless. Not worthy. Amount to nothing. So what is useless to be thrown? Therefore they are saying it's useless to serve the Lord. And God is saying about that. What kind of heart? It, your parents, you will, you will see that your children will see it's useless, your parents are useless. Their children will see. And what will be the, the feeling of a parent or parents to hear when their the hard work will be repaid with that word. It's painful when the service offered to God is a living sacrifice, Romans 12. It is rewarding, as I will say to you, it is rewarding. This is, the standing before you is a, a proof. It is rewarding and it is exciting. It is not another task. It is not tiresome. It is not hard work. It is a great privilege to be serving the living God, you know? It is scary to stand here. And Brother David said, don't clap. <laughs> and then in our covenant, you say, oh, so and so will, will lead us and uh, clap and the more than nervous because uh, the more the, the one who's going to stand will be very nervous because we are excited and here we are. We cannot describe what is inside of us because <laughs> we are waiting to, waiting to what's happening inside of us. So, you know, it is a privilege to be serving God. It is really a privilege. But they are saying, what profit is it that we have kept? You know what ordinance? Don't cross the road when it is red. <laughs> that is ordinance. Yeah? <laughs> or, or don't park illegally. You're going to be receiving ticket. That is the ordinance. A law promulgated by the, uh, the land. It is an ordinance. So, this is an ordinance to the people of Israel. 
And there's you were saying, and then what profit is it that we have kept his, his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? <coughs> Seeing we serve the Lord. Can we be rewarded? What will be my reward? What is the recognition? When when is my increase? My bonus. <laughs> In serving the Lord, who is going to give you your increase, your bonus, your reward? So they're saying, what profit is it? You know profit? How many business people here? This is the language of the business people. Profit. Profit is the language of business people. What can I get out of it? I'm very different. What can I get out of this contract? Will this be favorable to my company, to me? How does it benefit the company or me? When these words are directed to God, only selfish people say. When you are going to say to God, what profit is it serving you? So you are waiting for reward. You are waiting for benefit. You know this verse in uh, Psalms 103? Rest to, rest to, bless the Lord all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, that is profits. What God give you? Forgiveness, healing, redemption, loving kindness, and the mercy, satisfaction, the renewing of the strength. God give you. And you are still asking for more? God can give you more if your heart is right. We can. And see, walking as murderers, you know, in the hometown, you see the people who are mourning. They cover their head and they're white and sometimes black. And we know, and they're wearing a uniform. And you don't want to that because fashion, you know? We, we want to find fashion. If you're going to be in uniform, that's like somebody is, uh, there's a disciplinarian that's going to wear the same certain kind of uniform. So mourners are going to walk the same step and you are going to, uh, your face will be the same. Are not allowed to be happy. This mourners grieving. Somebody died. I hope still died this help us. That's why we're going to mourn. Not because we cannot enjoy the worldly things that this world offers. That we're going to be walking as mourners in this world. And you know, it says here, walking mourners before. And did you notice know our 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 music name? Before the Lord of hosts walk as mourners. I just uh, wrote the here there. It says here in uh, yeah, and we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is Jehovah Sabaoth. He will come to your aid when you are in crisis and give you your victory. And they are saying, you are the guy of victory. Why I am so sad? Why I am restricted? I am not happy in this condition. But you are the Lord of crisis. And I, let, us, let us see, what, what are the crises? Verse 15. You know the crisis? The crisis is envious of the blessed, of the proud blessed. Promotion of the wicked and those who tame God go and punish. But these are their crises, you know? Sometimes we also feel this crisis and we, we have this pity party. Because why they are, why, why they are uh, uh, like the standard of living in the faith? And I hear still the same. And why we look around? And so that was called crisis to them. So, okay. Has Israel forgotten? Has Israel forgotten? The crisis is that the proud were blessed, the wicked promoted or rest them, and those who think the Lord <coughs> went and punished. Has Israel forgotten what happened to Chasai? Remember Chasai? Is the helper? The leprosy of the Naaman cling yes. to him because he lied and said, Where have you been? 
She has said, your servant did not go anywhere. But she ran after the Amen and took the gifts. And so he was punished. And in second case, five twenty-seven, he and all his uh, household and everything were uh, put into the uh, somewhere and they were stoned, they died, and they were born. They were born. They were stoned, they were born. So they died, all of them. How about Ikan in Joshua? Because the crisis was the white proud are this and white of wicked are raised up. Ikan, he, because of greediness in Joshua 7 25. It was found out. That's it to the uh, Joshua, stop crying, sort out, find out the culprit, and found out. Oh, standing, 12, standing this uh, tribe and standing this family and found out Achan because of covetousness. So we are going to be careful to see who are practicing because if they are doing it in deceit, they are going to face the just judgment of Christ. He is righteous. He is a righteous child. About him, man. He was hung in the gallows, planning to kill all the Jews, but he was hung in the gallows. Who knows what God was doing all of this? To this? Who knows? At this time, they were murmuring. What profit is it? And God was just testing them. Who will love God? Who will not? Who will serve God? Who will not? Who will remain steadfast? Who will not? Who are genuine, who are faith, who will ensure, who will be falling away in the way. But you know, there's a verse, and I'm going to have Angie read. Verse. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was unbiased at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they black like other men. Therefore pride compasses them about as a train, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Verse 16, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Painful to see the proud are blessed and the wicked are raised up. And those who tempt the Lord going and punish. Verse 17, and I love this verse. I hear this one in 1974 and I will never forget until I went into the sanctuary until you have an encounter with God. You are going to be envious of what is happening left and right, because God will be enough for you. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood. So what is that that we are going to end when we know the end? In verse 16,
There were some who were genuinely touched as they listened as to what the Lord was saying through Malachi. He spoke to one another and they repented over sins out of the nation's shortcoming. God listened and heard. Whenever we speak, maybe inside of our hearts, maybe in our minds we speak, but God knows because He's God. He knows. So there were people genuinely touched of what Malachi been bringing and challenging them. And we call them remnants. We call them remnants. Those who remain serving God unnoticed. Keep on loving Him without receiving any commendation or public recognition. Those who meditate on His name. And I, uh, earlier I said, the Lord of hosts is one of His name. And earlier, we, almost every song that we sang has a name, the name of Jesus. What is on His name? Because he said, you were walking as mourners before the Lord of hosts. And here, those who meditate on his name. What is on his name? Victory, deliverance, salvation. All heavens declares the glory of the risen Lord. There is a song, it's a very old song, and I love this song. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is Counselor. His name is Wonderful. His name is Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. No fear of talking against God. They were complaining to the Lord of hosts, whose name is above every name. Uh, even in Psalms 139, verse 4, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, my Lord, you know it all together. Yeah. God has books in heaven and keeps record of all conversation. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is the A to save in the alphabet. When you are going to speak verbally in your mind, in your heart, God knows. Because you can form a word without letters. So when these people in verse 16 fear the Lord, it says, then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard. Then, so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Who meditate on his name. They repented of their sins, they fear the Lord. They meditate on his name and they were written in the book of remembrance. What prophet is it? Your name will be written in the book of life. Are we aiming for temporary satisfaction in views of what is going on in somebody's life? Are we aiming to be written in that book? We are going to be very careful of ourselves. God would favor and bless those individuals on the day he comes to gather his people to himself. There will be a clear distinction between righteous and wicked. Do we know that? Mm -hmm. Clear distinction between the righteous and the wicked, those who serve God and those who are not. So we're going to go to the next slide. And that's it. Those who fear the Lord will be remembered. They shall be mine. Is the Lord. Like the children. Mine, mine, mine. Everything is mine. And the parents will say, just give, just give. Yes. And that's it. You will be mine. I, I just, uh, 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 this is a true testimony. There was like a trial in a basketball. And she, he was short and he was not picked up. 
because he was small and, and thin and short. How is the feeling if you are going to be chosen to be a part of the team? But Jesus, God, does not look at the outward appearance, looking into the heart. And God say, you, 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 you are mine. And what a joy it is when God say, you belong to me. So we are not without a group. We belong to God. We belong to God. So since this shall be mine, since the Lord of hosts, again, the Lord of hosts, on that day I make up, his, we are God's treasured position. We are God's jewel. And God's grace will be extended to them. It says, even as a man spares his own son who serve him. That is favor, and that is profit. God will favor and bless those individuals. On the day he comes to gather his people. And then, what profit? We are going to look to the next. You, how about you? Okay, to the next one, slide. How about you and I? Who are we going to emulate, to follow? Mm -hmm. The Israelites during Malachi's time or poor? It is up to us to make a choice. There are times we may not see the difference. There are times when it seems evil people are blessed and live less stressful life and less turmoil. You are a believer and you are living in, in chaos. <laughs> you know? But you look at Malachi chapter 4. And this is a part of, uh, supposed to be that part of this. But that is the answer. So I am going to get, but I think pastor is going to uh, talk about that. That is the answer. Aside from Psalms 73. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubborn. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that we live, they neither wrote nor Christ. That is the answer. So, which example again? I will ask a question. Go back to the first slide, the first slide. We'll go back to the first slide. Okay, life is a journey. The encounter God represents the triangle. And they're aiming to go to heaven. And that is our aim. So that is the Israelites. When we accepted Jesus representing the cross, and Paul accepted, became converted <coughs> on the way to Damascus, and maybe the third one is us. So, it's journey. Which example are we going to find? Murmuring? Complaining? Looking around? People's lives? And why mine is miserable? And they are living in luxury? And I'm here a believer? When I will ask a question. Was there really an encounter with Jesus in your life? Was there really a true genuine encounter? Have we met the Lord? Because poor meet the Lord and the Lord into Jesus. Who are your Lord? I am Jesus whom you crucified. Have you really met? That is the question. Or you just riding the tide and you don't know when you started. When we are going to see, when did you receive Jesus? Ah, oh, when I was a child, I cannot remember. We should remember. You know what is an encounter? An encounter sometimes involves fighting and violence. Some died. Some will be casualties. That is an encounter. Did we have a true encounter with the Lord that we cannot forget? So it is very important in our walk that we are not going to be walking endlessly. Because we are having a destination to go. Yes? Well, I will say, the Godfather is writing the itinerary. It is in the... Yeah. And Jesus said, follow me, follow me. He is the tour leader. The Holy Spirit is your tour guide. You are not alone in your journey. God helps. 
that you can call. So is there, was there really a personal encounter? It is a challenge for each one of us. As Brother Sani said, what's the use of coming? We are, when you are not sure why you are here, we are here because of this relationship. We are here because we know where we're going to go. When you are going to exit the door, you know what you are going to do. Or you know your way to your home. What are we going to do tomorrow, you know? In Christian life, it's the same. When we exit the door, it's really God inside of us. That is our question. So, it is, life is a journey. We are going to uh, grow weary. Paul said, don't grow weary in doing good. We are going to grow weary. But we are going to also announce, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I ran the race, I have finished my course. So let it be that that will be our cry. It doesn't matter what will be our experiences and the journey. As long as you are looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith, there is a destination. Don't let, don't let anything, anyone derail you in your journey. Each one is going to decide for his and for your own. You are going to decide for your own. Yes. An encounter is a decision to receive Jesus into your life. What else does it have? Soul, whose name was later changed to food, fell on his horse blindly. A giving, a surrendering of who he was before to God. And let it be that we are going to experience the same encounter. Or our Coming to church or calling ourselves a Christian is only in vain. And let it be. Let it be. Oh Lord, as I said earlier, with the hearers, the doers of your word, and the burden, your burden, your great love, and it is the hope of the earth is set assured in Jesus. Is set assured. The hope of all the earth is set assured in your great love. And this great love has been a burden because the people continuing to refuse to receive. And so I'm praying this afternoon will not be in vain. And we're going to look very in rain until we reach your face to face, encounter your presence. Only then we can understand our aim, their aim. And let it be so. Today, shall we search our hearts? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is speaking to you. As I said, I am the mission chair. What an honor. What a privilege. A mission chair. A deliverer of this burden. Right to the door of your heart. When you open the door of your heart to receive Jesus, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. God is knocking the door of your heart. And I pray you open the door. Serving God is rewarding and it is exciting. It is not useless. It is not person. It is not a task. It is a joy, an honor, a privilege. Or as close people. Everyone searching of self. Speak to your people. 
a weakening of our spirits, minister to us this afternoon. Because the song says, the hope of all the earth is rest assured in your great love. And we are not going to continually turn away from that great love of yours. <laughs>